Hi guys, it's Jan from Melbourne Food Forest. Now this is the tour that many of you voted on in my Instagram stories. It came out on top. Our chilies and capsicum, aka peppers, hot and sweet peppers. I'm going to show you all the ones we have growing this season and also talk about one of the varieties that we're not growing anymore and why. So let's get into it. So first up I'm going to show you the peppers we have growing in the greenhouse and then we can contrast the progress of them to the ones growing outside and see whether it's better to grow in the greenhouse or outside. There's pros and cons. Okay, we have to start with these. I would say that these are one of the most beautiful vegetables in existence. The, they look beautiful on camera, but it doesn't quite do it justice. It, when you see it in real life, their colors are even more stunning. You can't quite believe that they're real, like it almost looks artificial. So this is an odour pepper. It's actually what we would call in Australia a capsicum. So our definitions are um, a bit confusing. Capsicum we tend to use for sweet peppers and chilies for hot peppers, as you would say in the States. So this is a sweet pepper. It has no heat whatsoever. It's a beautiful pointy torpedo shaped capsicum and it actually undergoes four color changes as it ripens so oh I can show you you can see that baby one there they start off a banana yellow color and I'll put up a photo to show you what this looked like a few weeks ago then as they develop and get to their second stage they turn this amazing iridescent deep purple with a slight blue hue to it just absolutely amazing so they look ripe already but in fact this is equivalent to your green capsicum stage <laughs> it's quite misleading looks like it's ripe but it's actually only green then next it's going to start developing um, orange streaks on it so it stays purple for quite a few weeks so you know you get to appreciate this color for for a while and then it'll develop orange streaks before settling on this dusky pink red once it's ripe so it ultimately will turn red but the color changes as it's ripening uh, something to be enjoyed in and of itself so it's a compact plant we've planted it in a, a medium pot I'd say that's about 28 centimeters diameter I was gonna size it up if it ended up outgrowing this pot but I can't see any roots poking out and it looks pretty happy I would recommend giving your peppers a steak as we have here this one doesn't get particularly tall but you know with this amount of fruit on it they get heavy and can topple over and snap so some support be much appreciated you can see they're a good good sized pepper they're very sweet with a thick skin imagine a purple salsa or putting that in a stir fry or on a salad incredible incredible and you can see let me see if I can find any flowers still yep there's one there come around this way little white flowers very unassuming most peppers have quite boring flowers dare I say compared to the fruit at least so if you keep it happy they will keep producing flowers and more baby fruit of which there's lots coming up around here through the season yeah so this one is a is one you have to grow we've got three of these in our yard this year 
love them. Next up, I have to show you these paprika peppers. I think many of us would have had paprika powder before. It's that red powder you buy in the spice section. It's quite rich and smoky, but not too hot. So these are very much a sweet pepper. Paprika powder is so yum on in Mexican dishes, and some people will use it in um, goulash, a traditional Hungarian stew, typically made with beef. So growing your own is wonderful because look how beautiful they are. They're glossy and red. They're small. They're a small sized pepper, smaller than these Oda peppers. These are more your standard sized pepper and these are like a, like a medium sized. This plant was overwintered. I planted it at the end of autumn so we only got a couple of fruit off it last year but this year as you can see it's really come to life and it's the first to produce a ripe capsicum so it is a bit ahead than these other ones so this one I planted from seed this season in late winter so it's ahead in ripening but the seed planted ones are catching up to it in terms of size but overwintered chilies and capsicums will most likely produce your first fully ripe fruit, which is amazing to be eating just just at midsummer, really fresh, ripe, red capsicum. And these are very sweet, no heat in them at all. Really productive, as you can see. Again, grown in a small pot, small to medium pot and quite a short growing, compact little bushy plant. This has produced, you can see its first flush of fruit and if you look carefully, there's a second flush of flowers that are becoming fruit right now. So these will keep producing throughout the season if you treat them with respect and a bit of care. Now this is another overwintered capsicum. From memory, I think this is the ones that turn this beautiful orange color. And the orange peppers have a different nutrient profile and different antioxidants in them. Now you can see the difference between this one and the paprika peppers I just showed you. There's no ripe ones yet. And the reason why, look at them, they're huge and the shape as well. So the bigger the pepper, the longer it will take to ripen. And so your pointy shaped ones are going to ripen much quicker than your big fat ones like the ones you get from the supermarket. So even though this was an overwintered plant and it's loaded with fruit, may not ripen for a while just because of the variety. This is very much a sweet pepper and it looks so dazzling when it's ripening because of the beautiful orange colour, deep orange colour. Again, look how tiny this is. This is under 30 centimetres tall and you know, so laden with fruit already. You can eat them at the green stage, of course. They're not as sweet as when they're ripe. They have a different flavor profile at each stage. But still nice. Might eat some of them green and then save some to ripen as a delicious sweet pepper. Here we've got a space chili. Now, you might be wondering what that name is all about. Well, these were actually at one point, the ancestors of these chilies were sent into space as part of a breeding program by China. So there was lots of famines in China in my parents' generation, sadly, and there wasn't enough food. So they found that by bringing chilies into space caused them to grow bigger, healthier, and more prolific chilies. So they sent a whole bunch of different chilies into space and bred 
a number of space chilies. This one is called the Helix Nebula. And you can see, yeah, that going into space has really transformed these chilies. Like this is super, super long. That's about, yeah, just under 30 centimeters long. That's crazy. And they get a lot of character. They're distorted and twisted. Some of them are like fully twirly, twisty ones like this. Looks like a, a twisty chip or a little pig's tail. They're all different and incredible. Like I have never seen anything like this before. Any chilies this magnificent. They haven't ripened yet, but I am already impressed. Like tiny little plant, huge chilies. I think going into space, look, it really does change you. <laughs> and there's other space chilies too, if you want to check them out. They're all equally dark and fascinating in their own way. And the taste. It's actually considered to be a uh, sweet pepper. It's not meant to really have any heat at all. It's got a sweet apple-like flavor. Great in salads and salsas. So you would use it more like a capsicum than you would a chili. I mean, imagine serving this up to friends and dinner guests. They would be impressed. <laughs> like, <laughs> how could you not be impressed with this? Now, moving on to the Buena Mulata chili, which has just started producing. Okay, I can hear Panda. <laughs> He's very determined to <laughs> video bomb every single one of my videos, I swear, consistently. A hundred percent of them. He seems to wake up as soon as I start um, filming. Yeah, so this one is a amazing purple chili again not as deep in color as the other pepper it's more a lighter purple like a lilac you can see it started I can see one two three four and you know this is one that's just the baby they come out a bit green and then they quickly transform into this color. So yeah, there's another one there. Um, and like the other pepper, it undergoes a similar color change as it ripens. So it goes from purple to orange streaks again. And then it will turn um, red to pink when it ripens. You can just imagine once this is covered in chilies and hopefully you'll get to that stage and I can show you in an updated tour how amazing this looks. So this actually is a chili. It's a hot pepper, spicy pepper. It's mid-range heat which is how we enjoy it. Not too hot and the color is amazing. It'd be a great pickling chili. Stuff these all into a jar and you have a jar of purple chilies. Incredible. It's a bit taller growing than any of the other ones I've shown you so far. Probably up to about 50-60 centimeters at the moment. You can see the space chili next to it, much shorter. And oh the pepper and um, paprika, much shorter. Moving on to this one over here. Now another fascinating chili. And this one's only got one one fruit on it so far. It's called a UFO chili. And you can see why. It forms these uh, alien spaceship looking chilies, which will get a bit bigger than this. They're meant to be sweet and apple-y tasting again and a medium to hot chili 
and you can see the beautiful flowers. This one has purple flowers, which is different to the odor pepper and the paprika, and your standard capsicum, which have white flowers generally. So this one's covered in flowers, but a bit later producing on the fruit. The stems are also beautiful purple streaks along them. Can't wait to see this studded with UFOs. <laughs> it's going to look out of this world. Another tall growing chili around this one's the tallest I think out of the bunch in the greenhouse. It's about 60 centimeters. It said that this chili can grow up to a meter tall so it can be quite a big bushy plant. I've got it again in a this medium-sized pot but I'm hoping to overwinter it this year and next year repot it into something bigger if it gets taller. Next up we've got this Christmas blue chili. We actually gave away some of these as gifts at Christmas time because love the name, very appropriate and the colour, it's so festive. Hi Ben. <laughs> Wanna see some chilies? It forms um, these upward, skyward chilies which is amazing. They look like Christmas lights on the chili plant. At the moment all the ones on there are purple but they'll turn pink and orange and you'll have them all on the bush. Different coloured chilies like mini Christmas lights. Just lovely. Currently all the ones we have on here are purple but soon there'll be ones that come out different colours and these will start changing colours too to pink and orange and red and the whole bush will be this multi-coloured Christmas lights they look like. They actually look like little globes especially the way they point upwards. Most chilies grow downwards but these go up skyward. Very cute. And you can see the leaves why it's called Christmas blue chili leaves are a deep purple colour and the stems as well again purple. It's a really stunning chilli. I would say it's as ornamental as it is tasty. These chilies tend on the hot side so they're for those friends, friends of yours who like hotter chilies if you want to gift them a plant and it's quite tall growing as well. Similar height, slightly shorter than the UFO, so close to 60 centimeters again. Beautiful, beautiful bush. This would look amazing I think in a pot, in a feature pot beside the back door. Just the foliage and the fruit are really pretty to look at. Next up we have these black chilies. I'm pretty sure that was what it was called when I bought it. I bought it as a small seedling last year and this year it's gotten big. You can see again it's a purple flowering variety which reflects the colour of the chilies. Really beautiful purple white flowers actually. Nice. And the fruit starts off green, quite green, and turns black. Like that. When it's ripe. Pretty incredible. It's a nice one. And I'm glad I managed to overwinter this one. Not all of them. Not all of my chilies survived. And you can see, like this one, it's half green, half black. So this is undergoing colour change. It's ripening. 
and this one down here. Just cleaned it up with the mulch. Had a bit of mulch on it. A bit green, a bit black. Quite a compact grower again. So while I'm in this corner of the greenhouse, it reminds me, here in the corner we had a habanero, a mustard habanero growing last year, and that has not survived winter. As you can tell, it's gone. I chopped it down. It's gone. And I did save seeds from it, but I'm not replanting it. I didn't love the flavour of it, surprisingly. I found it just heat with none of that rich chilli flavour, which is the part that I enjoy. And with kids, we can't, you know, cook, blast your head off dishes every single day. So, yeah, that's one we won't be growing again this year. The yellow was pretty, though. The mustard was pretty. I think we've still got some left in the freezer, actually, of the fruit, because it was so productive. But not replanting. Another overwintered chili on the opposite side of the greenhouse bed is I am pretty sure this is a jalapeno. You can see some babies there. It's grown under the canopy of our um, tomatoes. So it just shows you how tough chilies are and capsicum. They kind of tolerate any conditions including neglect. Like I didn't even realize this had come back and have not been giving it much love so far but I will give it the manure and top it up with some mulch but yeah we love jalapenos for, for us they have the best heat level and a great chili flavor you can see white flowers there and lots of buds on the way so even though this one's overwintered I think it's bit slow off the mark because it's not getting much sun in this shady corner under the tomatoes but looks like we'll still get a good amount of chilies a good amount of jalapenos can never have too many of them love them in all dishes and pasta sauces as well as pickled yum panda do you want to move out of the way so I can get through and show people some other chilies? What do you think? No? You're not fussed, are you? I'm going to have to step over you. Okay. Last chili in the greenhouse, unless I've missed one, which is totally possible in this jungle. You can see it's quite, quite dense now in the tomato beds. Last chili is this white Trupertino chili. Now you can see this one's way smaller than the other plants. It's so much behind and hasn't got any chilies on it yet. Has it even got any flowers? Oh yep, first set of flowers there. It's still a while off producing any chilies. Now this actually started a similar size to the others but has really fallen behind and the reason is it's had a bout of aphids and I noticed it only a couple of weeks ago. See that ant there? So seeing ants on your plants should tell you it's a sign, a red flag that you've got aphids because ants love to suck the sweet dew, the sweet honey that aphids pull out of the leaves so you can often see a sticky residue on your leaves and the ants will actually farm the aphids by moving them around your plant so they, they are actually um, co-conspirators in this in harming your plant so I didn't notice them because they were all on the back side of the leaf so I'll see if I can still find any to show you now I hope there's not too many left because as soon as I've realized leapt into action so it's a good tip to check check the growing tips of your chili plants and your capsicums and check the underside of the leaves too so I think 
done a decent job of, oh yeah, there's a couple, I don't know if you can see that. There's a couple on that leaf. There we go, I found one on the back of the leaf. You see that white, those couple of white dots in it. There's one big one and a couple of small ones. So go through and just squish those. A few weeks ago, the backs of this plant's leaves were all covered in aphids, hence it was stunted. And you can see that that leaf actually looks quite distorted, so that tells you that was damaged by aphids when it was just a baby leaf, just emerging. So it's always going to look distorted, but it's fine now. We've gotten rid of the infestation and it's looking heaps better, putting out flowers and new side shoots as well. So this is meant to be a really beautiful white teardropped shaped chili. It, the plant can get quite big and when it's at its full size it should be about 50 to 60 centimeters tall. So a little while to go but I hope next time on the updated tour I'll be able to show you what the chilies look like. They start off lime green and then turn this beautiful white color which looks amazing and they're quite a sweet and fruity tasting chili very mild heat which sounds ideal for us and i reckon they'd be good for pickling too just because of the size we're moving outside the greenhouse now i've got these purple capsicums so very sweet these are purple capsicums growing outside the greenhouse. These were overwintered as well, so they start off green and then they get speckles of purple until they become purple. Almost black, black kind of colour. It's amazing. But I did just want to show you, you can see here, it's got sunburn. So the ones outside the greenhouse are actually more burned than the ones inside. We don't have any sunburn inside. So I'm going to be uploading a separate video on how to, why things don't bake in your greenhouse because people are surprised. They think it's like an oven. In fact, this shows that the ones in the greenhouse are actually better protected than the ones out here under direct harsh sun. They've got sunburn on them. You see that one, bit of sunburn as well, but otherwise, oh, beautiful glossy colour. Just quickly rush through these out here. Now this one, I can't remember what it was because it doesn't have a label. Might just be a standard capsicum. You can see the paprika out here is a bit less happy than the one in there. It's got red fruit, but a bit behind. It doesn't have as much fruit on it. But it is bushier. Now this one is our lemon drop chili. No fruit on it yet. First sign of flowers. There. It's called an, its other name is Aji chili. It's meant to have a beautiful slightly lemony flavour and in Peru it's dried and sprinkled on as a seasoning. On dishes so looking forward to this one this is another odor pepper you can see the one outside has only got one fruit on it but more flowers on the way so happier in the greenhouse this one the buena mulata outside is about at the same stage as the one in the greenhouse both looking happy this ufo chili does not have any fruit on it just yet. Flowers though. I've got another space chili here. As you can see the fruit have really suffered from sunburn while the ones in the greenhouse are totally fine but these have turned red so I guess that really intense sun has helped them color up much more but it's also damaged them. This one seems to have a lot more fruit on the way though, which is exciting. So these chilies are quite damaged outside. 
but the plant seems to have lots of babies on the way. You can see how tiny they are when they first start out. It's hard to believe that they're going to grow into these 30 centimeter long chilies. Incredible. Second. Now this massive chili, this is already over a meter tall, is a bishop's crown or often called a bell-shaped chili. I'll show you the label because I bought this as a seedling. See it says here it's a mild chili, it's got three on the scale and it's got that funny bell shape or maybe like a, a bishop's crown. It's quite a big growing chili so let's see what it says. It says it get yeah up to a meter and 60 centimeters wide. So last year I bought it as a small seedling no bigger than this little shoot that's come off the side here now. So that's how big it was when I bought it and now it's turned into a tree. So if by next year I might need to, I've got this in a much larger pot. This is about 40 centimeters wide. By next year, I may need to repot it into something bigger. You can see the lovely white bell-shaped flowers. They're actually a little bit yellow colored. Lots and lots of flowers, but I have yet to see any fruit form on it. I think it's not far off though. Hope to be able to show you them next time. It's meant to be really sweet, mild tasting chili, more like a capsicum or a sweet pepper, really. Lovely, big, statuesque tree. And really unusually shaped chilies, so can't wait to see some. And last pepper I want to show you are these bull's horn peppers. I'll put up a photo of our ripe ones from last season, but they're so good because of the shape. As I mentioned earlier, the pointy, long, thin shapes ripen much quicker than the thick, wide ones like the ones you get in supermarkets. And you can see this is loaded with fruit. Really productive variety. Has white flowers. And once they've ripened, they're the most stunning looking red bullhorn shaped capsicum. They look hot, so people <laughs> are usually like, oh my gosh, how hot is that? Like, scared to eat it. But it's actually really sweet. Really, really sweet pepper. Great for pasta sauces. That's how we love it. So I look forward to showing you these as they ripen. Now finally, I want to show you a perennial chili. So all the other chilies and capsicums you saw before I had in pots because I'm going to move into the greenhouse to overwinter. They're quite sensitive to cold and need protection if you want to get them through another season. They might give you two or three seasons at best, maybe up to the really good ones, five or six. But this is a true perennial chili. This just lives outside, handles frosts with no issues. And this plant I hacked back because it gets so big, it's like a tree. I hacked back to just three bare branches in winter and now it's come back again. So big. And I've been pruning, pruning because this is meant to be a path here and you're meant to actually be able to walk through but it keeps growing, so prolific. Takes a few seasons to get going. I'd say in its second and third year, it really starts producing crazy amounts of chilies. You can see this is loaded with fruit already. It's got velvety big leaves and prefers a more shaded aspect. Doesn't need full sun, this chili, whereas the other chilies love it. So it's called a Rokoto chili. And there's also another slightly different version called Manzano. And there's an orange and a red version. This is a red 
ricotto chili crazily productive like we had a freezer full of these and gave so many away and they're quite hot they're actually a bit of a lottery so it's hit or miss you'll either get one that blows your head off or you'll get one that's quite mild and you won't know which you have until you try it so they, they, these are the hottest chili we grow like the if you get a really hot one Ooh. yes you won't be able to speak for a few minutes after that so these are really for your hot chili lover the seeds inside are black unlike with standard chilies which are more yellow or white and purple flowers this will live for easily decades becomes a tree so you should actually plant it somewhere with this more space I haven't given it much space just got this corner and I have to keep pruning it back but great chili for cold areas because it's actually a real perennial chili and cold tolerant mm -hmm.